So at the end of this video, I'm going to make a one minute video about why partridges are awesome. But right now, I don't know anything about them. I know that they're a ground dwelling bird, they're brown, I've seen a picture of them, and that's it. So let's go out and find why partridges are awesome. Now, I've got a one hour timer to get this whole research done. I usually research for much longer than that, and it's a skill I need to work on to research a bit faster. So I'll start the timer. Partridges are medium-sized, non-migratory game birds with a wide native distribution throughout the Old World, including Europe, Asia, and parts of Africa. I live in North America. This is why I have never seen a partridge, is because they don't live here. Native to grassy steppes. Nowadays, they are often found nesting on agricultural land. They nest on the ground and have a diet consisting of seeds, grapes, and insects. Now, it does say that they nest on agricultural land, but it also says that they're native to grassy steppes. So specifying that a large part of their diet is grapes, I'm sure they don't always eat grapes. There's the 12 days of Christmas, a partridge in a pear tree. Partridges are unlikely to be seen in pear trees because they are ground nesting birds, but it has been suggested that the text a pear tree is a corruption of the French. Which means what? Okay, so this phrase means a partridge. So a, the gift is a partridge in a partridge. All right, that song is much more strange than I thought it is. Oh, there's multiple types of partridge. A molecular phylogeny of pe <laughs> a molecular phylogeny of peasants and peasants, pheasants and partridges suggests that these lineages are not monophyletic. So monophyletic means that all the animals in the group are related to each other, and this is saying that it's not monophyletic, which means that uh, the group of pheasants and partridges say, might not all be related, in which case they have to fix that, which means that the names might change in the future, and this is why I don't bother learning taxonomy, because uh, in my experience at least, as soon as you learn it, it just changes. Um, I'll give you a funny example. There is a bird called a scarlet tanager, and originally they just assumed it was a tanager, named it as such, and it turned out that tan scarlet tanagers are actually in the cardinal family. So scarlet tanagers are cardinals. There's another bird called a red-capped cardinal, named as such. In 2014, the Ornithological Congress decided that it is actually a tanager. So red-capped cardinal, actually a tanager. Scarlet tanager, actually a cardinal. Uh, and this is just what happens with naming conventions. I know people that like it, it's just not interesting to me. Uh, while we're going back to Wikipedia, I want to show you a cool adaptation of the Wikipedia formula, which is Wikiwand. It is the same exact information, just presented in a more beautiful way. So, if I search Wikiwand for partridge, look how much more beautiful that page is! It looks so nice! This is the bird that I think of when I think of a partridge. So it's a little brown bird and it hangs out on the ground. So let's find out why I'm more familiar with this. Uh, this is how I've heard of this particular species is because it lives in North America. I have 37 minutes to go and that is not enough time to do this. I was researching about where they live. They lay about 7 to 14 eggs, which is kind of interesting because um, Species that have high parental care tend to have fewer eggs, but species that have high uh, early mortality rates tend to lay lots of eggs. The benefit of having lots of eggs, obviously, is that your numbers can increase quickly, but then the parents don't have enough resources to invest a lot into each individual. So um, this is called an R-selected species because they're selected by the number of offspring they produce, and hopefully some of them make it to adulthood. Partridges are our selected species. As young chukars grow and before flying for the first time, they utilize wing-assisted incline running as a transition to adult flight. This behavior is found in several bird species, but has been extensively studied in chukar chicks as a model to explain the evolution of avian flight. 
definitely have to look more into that because wing assisted incline running sounds great. Okay, let's check out those references. Wing assisted incline running is a form of locomotion in which a bird flaps its wings to aid its hind limbs in climbing a slope. The summary of all this, all these words is that um, even very young birds that aren't able to fly, they can climb steeper slopes because they nest in rocky areas and they can uh, climb up a steep hill or they can jump up a rock by flapping their wings even though they can't lift their entire body up into the air and fly. Oh wow, the gray partridge is all over the place. Least concern. Oh well, that makes a lot of sense because they have that broad range so it's very unlikely that one event would uh, affect the entire population so they would be least concern. Uh, oh, good. Rotate that way, clockwise. Okay. Uh, 24 minutes. This is going to take too long to read. I got the species name for the gray partridge, which is Perdix Perdix, and put it into Google Scholar. Read online. Create an account. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I got an account. Now I can read this article. This is why research takes forever. Predation controls significantly increase the proportion of partridges that bred successfully in the average size of their broods, thus substantially improving the production of young. Excluding effects of sight and year predation control increased August numbers by 75%. Woo woo! Well, I think we know for a fact that partridges are an R selected species because if they remove the predators, suddenly their nest success goes up by 75%. So there's a lot of things eating partridges. That's what that tells me. So they're helped by the presence of farms because it clears land uh, into the grass the grassland type area that they're naturally found in but then they're not helped by farms because pesticides and it's not it doesn't have cover that they need to get away from predators this is probably a blind alley but let's find out why they were called the partridge family yep that is definitely a blind alley. Okay, seven minutes. I feel like I'm done. Like, what else do I need to know? I think I'm gonna go with the research I have and uh, make a one minute video about partridges and we'll find out why they're so cool. Partridges, what are they? They're ground nesting birds with incredibly cute babies. You won't find them in a pear tree, but anywhere with grass and rocks is a fine home for partridges. Partridges eat salad and seeds with the occasional bug snack. They lay up to 30 eggs in one nest with the hopes that one will make it to adulthood. It's tough to be a partridge, but partridges are tough enough to run up an almost vertical surface with their wings. In fact, they're so tough that they're considered least concern on the IUCN red list. They're well camouflaged with drab colors, so keep your eyes peeled and you might see the partridge invasion that's sweeping the globe. I hope you appreciate how awesome partridges are now. You've learned some cool facts and you've seen how that research process works. So I hope that helps you when you are researching animals on your own. And I really wanna thank you for stopping by to learn what makes life awesome.